how do you make sure that Superbook is, you know, accurate to the Bible? Um, because you're building these stories and there's a lot of background in it. There's people passing in the background. There's, you know, various interactions. How do you make sure the story stays on track and accurately represents the story in the Bible? Well, first of all, you tell the story straight from the Bible. You don't, you don't get off track and start telling, telling another story. Now, I realize in the Superbook that there are a couple of characters that are not in the Bible. Chris and Joy are very key characters. Gizmo. It, as well as Gizmo the robot. And uh, so I've, I've heard people ask at times, well, how can, how can it be accurate you've got these two kids and a robot in it? Well, you've got to understand that we are trying to kill the kids. And so we're trying to create a, uh, a program that has something that the kids can relate to. So Chris and Joy have, are, are kids that are in the age group that we're trying to appeal to. They go through a modern day scenario within each episode. It sets up some sort of dilemma that they have. It could be a moral dilemma or something. It could be just some, something crisis. Just very simple. Just something very simple of like, how do I respond to my parents? How do I respond to a bully at school? I see somebody stealing or cheating or or, or um, hurting hurting one of my friends. How do, how do I respond to that? Try to keep that issue often on a child on the child's level, and that's what the critical two in Superbook. Uh, now it takes place as well in the future. It's a story that's taking place in the future. In the future, Chris's uh, uh, dad has created Chris's dad, who is a scientist, has created a robot for him. This robot is a companion, also somebody that. Kind of watches out for Chris, and 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 again, uh, from an entertainment point of view, we created a robot that is fun and has all these quirky act, quirky activities and uh, humorous responses. Sometimes a little klutzy, um, but always stays within 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 his character. But the critical thing in that is that we are very careful in the whole process of Superbook, from the pre-production process to to the uh, scripting process. Make sure that the wraparound stories, that first of all, they're separate from the Bible story, but when the kids go back into time, and that's what Superbook is, it's a time travel story where uh, they go back and experience the stories of the Bible. When they go back, they will be with the Bible character in a story that you will recognize. Yes, they'll have some interaction with that character, but they never, under any circumstances, change the Bible story. They don't influence the Bible characters to uh, respond in any way that would influence the Bible story. The kids are observers and they're along for the ride and they're able to observe what's happening in the biblical story and we set up a dilemma, like I said in the wraparound story, and there's always this aha moment within the biblical story where they see how the biblical story relates to their personal life and how the Bible is relevant to their personal life and that's a way of bringing it home to kids today. But these are these are stories of history, their they're, they're stories of, uh, their holy stories, their stories of, of God and God's impact on the earth and God's desire to have a relationship with you. And so through these stories, their lives are, are changed. I mean, their lives, they really have, you really see the impact that the Bible has on the story, on the lives of, of Chris and Joy, and this is a great way for kids to relate to that as well. And, and that is a starting point for people that really have uh, dedicated their lives to studying the Bible, studying the, the Greek texts, studying the Hebrew texts, and uh, have, have really a strong understanding of biblical truth.